approved. Maybe yeah. Channel 4 is going to show up. <laughs> Okay, so you said he's eight, and how long have you had him is all I need to know, hon. Oh, I don't know. Uh, just a year, okay. Oh, he's hearing your voice. He's like, where's my mom? She's in this box, okay? You want to say hello? He's just sniffing the phone. Yeah, she's in there. Yeah, he's like, what? He goes, why are you there, mom? How come you're not here? What's happening? <laughs> I understand. I understand. He was just, he was asking me. Okay, so they don't talk in time. They kind of bring things up at random. So I asked him first what he wanted to talk about. And he said, well, I'm not used to all this kind of attention, but it's kind of fun. And he said that he picked you out before you picked him out. I don't know how you feel about that. Um, oh, over the internet. Oh, over the internet, okay. Well, he said once he met you, though, he knew who he was supposed to be with. And when the whole internet thing started, I had a lot of people calling me and like, why am I drawn to this animal? And, on the internet, I don't understand. It's because it's a past life thing. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Um, and then he said when you finally met him, you were like, oh dear Lord, I didn't realize he was that big. And he goes, well, this is the size I come in. That's just the way it goes. So, um, but he said, I, I know, I, th I love big horses too. My other horse was 18 hands. Um, he said he didn't complain with his He said that when you got him, he didn't know as much as you thought he knew. And so he wanted to make sure that initially you weren't disappointed because he's had some starts and stops and everything. And um, he said, I'm still a big kid and he wants to play with like an Equispirit ball. I mean, I just pulled in here. I don't know what all you guys do. And you know, your arenas are communal with everybody, but he wants to play with toys, but he wants you to be a part of that. So, uh, cause I do some liberty with my horse now cause he's retired. And he said he would really prefer that. Um, and then he showed me something is that you doing it, or do you have a trainer right now? Okay, all right. And and uh, he was asking me, do you want to do um, dressage with him, or even cowboy dressage? Is that what you're going with him? Okay. I know you're just showing off here. Okay, so you're going to have to be patient and wait. We're busy chatting with you, and your mom came here. Okay, so you're doing dressage, and then also, do you want to show him, or are you just doing it for fun? I'd like to show him something. Okay. Right, right. But I just didn't know if that's what the goal was, because the challenge for me is, first off, I want you to both be safe, and he's still a big kid, and you know that. And the second thing is, I want to make sure that you both are on the same page about what you want to do. And and he's really a creative thinker. So the challenge for you is to keep him interested because he gets bored really easy. Like after a couple of times going around, he's like, okay, well, I've done that. What else can I do now? <laughs> kind of thing. Um, and are you able to play some music with him and everything? Because he said that really helps. And it doesn't have to be anything that has a tempo to it. It's really more about just kind of um, keeping you interested as you're trying to help him. Well, he likes stuff that has a bit of a tempo to it. Like when we play at Liberty, we use Michael Bublé and the Beatles. And like we have an iPod docking station. And so everybody just brings their own music and stuff. And we have a good time with it kind of thing. So a um, uh, couple of things. He said he was worried that he wasn't going to pass the vet check. And I asked him why. And because he said his left hip gets stiff only because they let his feet get too long. So when you got him, I don't know how much you had to really do with his feet or whatever, but he said he was worried about that. So. I, I said I didn't know anything about his left hip. Okay, well he said it's just it's just stiff. It's not. I mean it's in the socket, and I was a vet tech for so long, and so I know what it's supposed to look like. But he said it was just it just got really stiff. Okay, so um, your saddle feels like it's comfortable. I asked him about that. He was also commenting about his braids. He said initially he was like. Really? Don't I look too girly with all these braids in my mane? And I said, well, you're metrosexual, you know, it's okay. <laughs> so, because he's like, well, now, he said, all the ladies tell me I'm cute. But, I mean, truthfully, I think he's gorgeous, but he didn't think he was all that and a slice of bread. Oh, now he's trying to reach for my water bottle. She's a character in this one. He's like, look, I'm so bored here. I think I'll just grab everything. Okay, what kind of things would you like to ask him? What do you want to know from him? I can keep asking general stuff. What's, what's, most, important, what's most important to you? I was going to ask, is he nearsighted or farsighted? 
Uh, he's nearsighted. He doesn't really see well at a distance. And so, like, if you... Uh, yeah, yes, and also there are times where um, he just kind of zones out. I mean, not all horses know how to be present, and he's kind of learning how to do that. So here's a good example. I'm sure you've driven home many times, and you pull in the driveway, and you go, well, okay, I guess Jesus was driving because I wasn't paying attention for a few minutes. And so he'll kind of... He knows that you've got the driving under control, and then he's like, out of my body, be back in five. And then he was like, whoa, what was I doing? So um, it, a lot of it is because he hasn't had that much concentrated schooling. Um, and he also, like I said, is a creative thinker, and it's hard to keep them in their body because they're busy looking at everything. Oh, my goodness. Yes, you are. So well, he's looking at me, and he goes, well, this is kind of weird. And he goes, I've never had a two-way conversation before. And I said, well, welcome to the world of communication. He said, well, my mom's usually tell me what to do, and I'm good with that. And he said, I'll send her stuff, and she listens. But he said, I've never had it with anybody else. So I said, okay. What do you think, huh? Yeah. So then he wanted to know if he's... Oh, go ahead. Oh, good. Because I wanted to know he was, you know, he had a nice uh, disposition, sure. and he seemed to be laughing and having a good time. Yeah, he's very easygoing. He's very easygoing. It's just the competitive side. You're going to have to work and bring that out of him. I mean, it can. It definitely can be done. Yeah, it's very easygoing. It's just the competitive side. You're going to have to work and bring that out of him. I mean, it can. It definitely can be done. Because um, he didn't, some horses hit the ground, like yesterday I did a bunch, and some of them hit the ground and they're like, okay, I'm a rainer, or I'm a racehorse, or, you know, I'm a show jumper. He said, I didn't quite know what I was going to do. I, he said, I really hadn't thought about it, to be honest. Um, and when he was hanging out with his horse mom, he said, she was just like, well, we'll get you to do something. And he goes, okay. So, you know, he doesn't, and, and most horses, when they start into dressage, give me a different answer than what he did. They usually look at me very perplexed and go, that's three PhDs and a master. Oh my God, I'll never get there. He's not, you know, he's not phased by it at all. He's like, well, it's fancy equitation. That's fine. That's what you want to do. I said, well, okay. He does that already. He does it most people. He often decides when he gets his Good. He canters in place when he gets his too. So I know he can do anything. Yeah. I don't know if it's a slight change in him, but he does a little bit more go and he's not even thinking. Good. Well, that's good. I mean, it's definitely there. So it really helps him to see another horse do the kind of work that you're doing because he's a very visual learner. Like he's the kid that would take the Ikea stuff out of the box and not really look at the instructions, but look at the picture on the outside of the box and figure out how to put it together. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. And and is she, is she at a level where she's doing tempi changes? Because he was showing me a horse doing tempi changes. Okay. Okay, he said he saw something. Oh, go ahead. Just, I just, yeah, she did changes, but it wasn't like tempi changes. Okay. Like every other rider. Okay. Well, he said he has seen a horse do that because he showed me that. Because he's like, I've seen that kind of stuff. Do I get to do that? And I said, well, yeah, I don't see any reason why you can't. So, I mean, for as big as he is, he's certainly pretty light, which is nice. Um, and, and like, let's say, you know, even if you hadn't called B or whatever, if you said, well, I'm thinking about buying this horse, because that's kind of how I deal with every animal in front of me. I mean, he's got good heart and lungs. His kidneys are good. His joints feel good. Um, that's why I was surprised where he said he was a little stiff in that left hip kind of thing. Um, but, and your equipment is fine. I mean, he's, like I said, he's just so lovely and easy going, like, well, okay, if that's what you want me to do. You know, I'm pretty chill about it. So, yeah. He's just, <laughs> he's like, I usually take a nap now. He goes, I'm, I'm having to stay awake to do this. He goes, I like to have my breakfast. I've had my coffee, looked at the paper. I like to take a little bit of a nap. But I'm staying awake for this. So, so he's very cool. So, does your trainer actually ride him also now? No, I did have someone. Um, we had a little accident where I had a trainer ride him for about a month. Oh, wow. Okay. 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 Because, I mean... But thankfully, he's so no agenda. He's like, well, okay, let's just see how it unfolds and rolls with it. And he's eyeing the guy that's doing the videotaping. He's like, why does that guy have that thing in his hand? What is that about? <laughs> this is a very interesting morning for you today, buddy. He goes, yeah, it is, that's for sure. So he's asking for watermelon, and he likes Granny Smith apples. I don't know if you've given him those, but that's his request as far as treats are concerned. Um, well, did you give him the rind or did you give him the pink stuff? Okay. Well, then he's, he he said he, he all he said was when I asked him why he spit it out, he said because it was just not 
ripe enough or too ripe or something. It just had an aftertaste. He said, someone else gave him a cube of it, and he said, I held it in my mouth, and it was really good. So I don't know when that was, but that's, that's a part he was asking for. I mean, he does have, I would say, more sensitive taste buds than most horses that I talk to. Um, and as far as the Granny Smith apples, those are more alkaline, and a lot of horses do like those too. So, Hey, sweetie, what you doing, huh? Yeah, so, he, so then he was like, well, when do we get to show off and let everybody see what I do? Because, you know, I, I understand that you're still giving him time to kind of grow into everything, but he really does want to show off to everybody. So would there be a schooling show you would take him to at some point? This summer. Okay, good. Okay, okay. well, you know, it's already May. In four weeks, it'll be Memorial Day. Summer's here. So that's why he's like, okay, good, good. He said, I just didn't want it to be like yet another year. Because he said, I'm... He, he likes to get out there and do his thing, and if he makes a mistake, it doesn't freak him out. And so to go to a school and show would be a really good experience for him. So he said that that was okay. Um, I asked him if he likes, you know, his house and his venue, and he said, yeah, I'm, you know, he said this is a good location. People come by and say hi to me. And he said, uh, I, I take a little bit of the night shift and help out here, and that's good. And um, so he's like, life is pretty, pretty good. And I don't have a lot of complaints. Hi, what do you think, huh? He said I was bored with the other stuff. He likes the massage now much better. <laughs> He's like trying to smell the phone. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Uh, he said the trail's okay. He said if, if that's all you need to do that one day, he said I'll go out for a little while. But he's really, like I said, he's not overwhelmed at all by doing massage, which is so unusual for me. And he's just so content <laughs> you know, learning. He's enjoying the learning process. And he'll come back to a stall and kind of go over everything and go, okay, this is this and this is that. And, and he's just really on top of it. So he's enjoying it. Really enjoying it. Um, not even, not at the moment. Yeah, um, his right TMJ is the one that kind of slides a little bit, but I don't feel it being a problem at the moment. And so if you do stretches with him, sometimes it'll just stay in place. But yeah, at this point, he's like checking all the boxes. He said everything else is in alignment. He's all right with that. So. Uh, a little, a little. So it's that diagonal. It's that left hip to that right TMJ. So when you get back, I, I have like a little hand massager. I got at Walgreens and you can just kind of work on, on their hindquarters and, and you can kind of, uh, he also likes a tail stretch too. Do you do that with him? A tail stretch with him? Where you no, I don't. Okay, well you, you, you support his, uh, the doctor of his tail and they usually like lean forward, but have somebody who's already, you know, done it, show you how to do it because it's hard to explain over the phone and I'm not gonna do it while you're, you're not here. Um, but my horse loves it. It really helps him stretch his back. And then you can also come out on either side of where his tail inserts and do small circles, and you can get them to hunch their back up. That's another good flexion, uh, flexion for them, too. So um, The only other thing he said to me is he's, he said there's been once where he was kind of super sensitive to anesthesia. In other words, like they gave him some, and I don't think they underdid it, but he said I needed a little bit more, and he said then I was kind of wiped out, which, you know, for a horse as big as he is, and... He looks like he's in great condition and stuff. He's, he seems to be a tad sensitive. So that's just the only other thing he wanted to give up as far as his medical history. So, but he's in a good place. Pretty easy going. Yeah, he's too sweet. Yep. I feel like I can trust him. I can really trust him. Well, yeah, and everybody asked that question, and I asked Beatrice that years ago with my first horse, and she said to me, what I'll say to you is, yes, you know, they trust us right away. But they don't trust their reaction. But for the most part, he's pretty grounded, and um, and he does feel confident with you. That's why when he does have those spooking moments, it's not because he's pre-planning it or trying to do it to get your attention. He's like so relaxed. You know, it's what my mom calls a backhanded compliment. You're such a good partner to him that all of a sudden he's like, whoa, yeah, I was doing this now. I guess I better pay attention to what's going on. <laughs> And that's where the music's fun because, again, it's like, oh, I love this song. And, you know, you have tempo. And you just, you don't have to really over-collect him. It's just keeping him mentally engaged. So he said the first couple of times you wrote him, he went, came back to the song. He was like, wow, my head hurts. Because he really had to stay focused. So he's so funny. This, this, is, this is Tom. I'm the husband. Wow. Hi. Okay, Tom. <laughs> I got you. Can he tell us anything about his previous homes? Homes. Uh, he said one. He was like he he used the word over babied, like they didn't ask him to be. Oh, oh, we having a problem here? It's okay, you guys. You're all right. Oh, look at the horses. 
being a little bit respectful. He said someone was kind of yanking him around a little bit. Um, and he said he was really kind of waiting for his, his life to start with Stephanie. And then did you give him to her as a gift? No. Okay, well, he kind of felt that. <laughs> what can I tell you? Well, I gave you and my husband's okay. Oh, okay, okay, because I kind of felt like I have to pass the dad test. <laughs> I had to pass the dad test. Definitely had to pass the dad test. I didn't get anything really negative about his other home. He was just standing around going, well, I'm waiting for my life to start, you know, and whoever else was engaged with him. I mean, it's taken him a while to grow up. Yes, he's a big boy, and um, not all big horses mature that way, but he's he's kind of been just chilling, doing his thing until Stephanie came along. And he's like, okay, well, now i got someone who's caulking in with me and being very invested in what's going on, and I want to do that back for her. So. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't get anything negative. There's, if there is something, I can ask him, but he's not volunteering anything that was negative. So. Yeah, and he said that, but he was like, it was boring. So, you know, why would I do that? It's, yeah, so it's like I just moseyed along, didn't have to think about anything, and it was my job, but I'm having way more fun with you. I mean, late, he just showed me that if you ever wanted to hook him again and take him, like, down to Del Mar or Pomona and do ladies' pleasure driving, he goes, that would be fun, because he's like, I obviously know how to do that already. And he said, then you could be really all dolled up and, you know, have a, vel you know, a velvet dress and a choker. He goes, I'll take you around. And he said, then I'm happy to do that. But, you know, to just... You know, to just pull a cat, he's like, yeah, just something I did, that's something I did, that's all, so. Yeah, tell him to try to be a little less spooky. Okay, well, that's the thing. First off, I can't tell an animal anything. If I could, I'd be retired living next to Oprah on Maui. I have met her, but I'm not living next to her. That's what I say to everybody. How about that Gail? Oh, yeah, but, but as far as his eyesight goes, but horses shy from their left eye to the right side of their brain. That's how they're primal. And so when they get worried about something, you're always better bending them, which your wife already knows how to do. And the things I mentioned about, like riding him with music, keeping him engaged, he has to learn to stay present. And that's something that a horse has to learn. And they're still doing that. And even though she's had him a year, and that's a huge amount of time to us, it's not to an animal. It's next to nothing. So... And even before, when I would get on my both my horses now, because one's gone, the other one's retired, I'd stand in front of them and say, the old lady's getting on. <laughs> and my horse would be like, yeah, all right, old lady, okay, all right. I'd have to remind him, you know. So, so yeah, I, I understand that. I want your wife to be safe, and I don't feel like he would do anything unduly, but you have to keep him in the moment and keep him present, and we already talked about that, so she knows what to do. Oh, he's already got so, you. He's cool. <laughs> Yeah. Right. So you can either start singing to him, or when I had my other horse who used to do dressage, I used to wiggle a bit in his mouth a little bit, and he's like, "Oh yeah, there, there you are," you know. So he's not he's not shutting down and ignoring your aids. Yesterday I had a horse that was like totally flipping this chick off he had had it he was having enough of it and so he was just like turning himself off like she's nagging me but that's not the case with your guy he's still young he's still maturing he's learning to be in the moment and not have someone just push him around because he was pulling a wagon just a different perspective that's all so well but he said that's recent he said, no one really said that to me when I was pulling a, a, a wagon. He was just a workhorse. So he's only just stepping into how good looking he is. So, And that's something else you can use when he's in the moment. You can just say, oh, look at you. You're doing so great. And you look so good. And he'll be like, really? Okay. I mean, he's never had mirrors around him, so he doesn't know how good looking he is. And he was never told as a baby he was good looking. So, so you have the opportunity now to, to kind of be his emotional booster and give him all, he's looking at me like, yeah, okay. I said, look, honey, I'm into black horses. Once you go black, you never go back, you know? <laughs> oh my goodness. He said, well, it's tough being a rock star, but I think I'm getting the hang of it now. I said, yeah, I think you are getting the hang of it. He just keeps giving me side eye like, this is all kind of weird. He's like, you're inside of me. You're asking me questions. I thought we were just going to have a discussion about me. He said, I didn't know I had to answer. 
And I said, well, you're doing just fine. And he goes, okay, all right. If this is what my mom wants, I'm all right with it. <laughs> but he's a lovely horse. You have some really nice raw material with him. There's nothing that you have to undo, which is nice, because sometimes you just, well, a lot of times you never know. I mean, they still call it horse trading for a reason. So. Yeah, he's, he's still learning how to canter. So do you just kiss to him, or are you just using the aids, or do you do both? What do you do to ask him for a canner? Um, I, I shift my weight, ask the inside weight. I do give him a little uh, bump on the uh, half halt. Okay. Mm -hmm. And some same outside leg and, and weight. Okay. Because the other thing you might want to try, and it's not going to interfere with your dressage concept, but one of the things that we kind of learn in natural horsemanship is kind of squeeze with your cheeks and lift your energy up. And, and when I showed that to him, he was like, oh, okay. And you also start like cantering in your body. You just kind of feel the motion of it. You should try that the next time where you don't have to worry about a lesson and you just kind of have him, you know, collected and stuff. But just start visualizing and give him that energy. And you'll see he might pick his head up like, okay, I'm ready to go. And that way you can still use your aids later. But that's another way to get him to be more emotionally responsive to you. So. Right. Yeah, good. Okay, okay. Well, it's all a process. At least you're on the same page that you're not rushing to get anywhere. You're kind of letting it unfold, which is good. Um, I, you know, I asked him if there's anything he really does not like. And all he said to me was one time somebody was, you know, like cracking a whip and he was like, where is that? You know, and so he wanted to look and see where it was. And um, because he said he's very respectful of those kind of things. But there's not anything else that he really dislikes. So that's good. Right, right. But I mean, it's like if someone's lunging a horse and you're passing by them or something like that, he might scooch a little bit and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. But there's not anything else he could say to me like, wow, I hate this, I don't like it. He's pretty much Mr. Go Along to Get Along, which is nice. So, so very cool. Very cool. All righty. Well, physically everything else feels good on it. At least his kidneys are in proportion with the rest of his body, which is nice. And so you don't have to worry about him staying, you know, hydrated and all that kind of thing. Oh, his only other thing was he said like last, whenever you wore him the last time and it was really hot, he's like, well, my kidneys are good because my mom doesn't drink enough water. So do you normally have like a, a can of water bag or something? Because he's like, I don't want to get dehydrated on me. So. All right. I don't drink enough water. It's true. Okay. Well, then that's his, and it's not even a complaint. It was a suggestion. <laughs> All right, well, he's, he's very cool, very cool. Okay, hon, let's do anything else. Oh, somebody's banging over here. Okay. All right, well, you enjoy the rest of your day, and thanks for putting today together. I appreciate it. And the gals are taking good care of me already, so that's great. Thank you for coming Yeah, my pleasure, my pleasure. All right, you have a good one. All righty, bye-bye. Okay.